Nothing says Americana like Mexican food, and nobody embodies that phrase better than Chipotle. Chipotle was never meant to blow up. In fact, it was only ever a means to an end, a temporary side business until founder Steve Ells could achieve his bigger dream. But with a highly profitable and watertight economic model that would make any Harvard Business School graduate lick their lips, Ells managed to grow this side hustle into a booming business with 2,800 locations across the US, quickly growing Chipotle into a fast food behemoth with over $6 billion in annual revenue. Although many might classify Chipotle as an instant success, the road to turning it into one of America's favorite fast food restaurants was a bumpy one. It would test Steve Ells' grit and determination and put him through the ringer even when he thought that future was all but guaranteed. Welcome to the Bootstrapped Founders Spotlight, a series brought to you by the Savvy Mates blog. We're going to put the spotlight on a bootstrapped founder that grew their company the old-fashioned way, using their own financial resources and know-how to build highly respectable and profitable companies, often risking everything they have in the process. Before we begin, this video is sponsored by Gig Rally. Does your business rely on freelancers or contractors? Are you often surprised by the amount that they end up billing you? Then you need Gig Rally to help you keep track of your financial obligation when you hire these professionals. Reduce your financial stress and run a much more profitable business by using Gig Rally. Try out for free by visiting gigrally.com. Steve Ells was born in 1965 in Indianapolis, Indiana, to a pharmaceutical executive and a housewife. His earliest experience in the kitchen was in third grade when he made scrambled eggs with his mother. She had, in his words, a well-seasoned, almost non-stick skillet. He grew up in a food-centric family, with his mother always watching cooking shows and buying recipe books, so it's no surprise that he aspired to become a chef from quite an early age. L studied at Boulder High School and later got his Bachelor of Arts degree in Art History from the University of Colorado, where he often cooked meals for his classmates. Where most of us survived college on ramen and Red Bull, it seems that anybody who went to university with Steve Ells enjoyed fancier meals, including rare French dishes like the duck confit. Weeks before graduation, he decided to switch it up and enroll in the Culinary Institute of America he graduated in 1990 and promptly began working for Jeremiah Tower at his legendary Stars restaurant in San Francisco. This was a landmark restaurant in California from 1984 till the late 90s and is considered the birthplace of Californian cuisine, New American cuisine and celebrity chefs. Having learned from the best, it was no surprise that L's next goal was to establish his own fine dining restaurant. Having worked in one himself, he knew that establishing one was no cheap operation. Restaurants of any kind tend to lose a lot of money before they can start turning a profit. So what he needed was an idea, a foolproof one that would generate profits as quickly as possible. He could then use those profits to finance his dream. One day before heading to work, he stopped at a Mexican taqueria in San Francisco's famous Mission District with a friend who suggested getting burritos. What Steve Ells got was unlike anything he'd eaten back in his hometown in Colorado. It was a giant flour tortilla stuffed with everything. Rice, beans, beef, salsa, cheese, all wrapped in foil, meant to be peeled back as you eat. The burritos Ells was used to back home were served on a plate, smothered in chili, and eaten with a fork and a knife. This experience was certainly different. As he began frequenting similar places in San Francisco, he started doing the math, taking into account the number of people lining up for these burritos, the $5 average retail price per burrito, the number of staff behind the counter, the cost of the ingredients and equipment, it all seemed to come together. His gut feeling told him that this as an economic model could be incredibly profitable. Armed with a foolproof plan and his training from stars, Steve Ells moved back to Colorado to start his fast casual restaurant. He started with a rather modest investment of $85,000 borrowed from his father. All of it was poured into refinishing a rather dingy looking 850 square foot space next to the University of Denver. A large amount of the labor from tiling and painting was done by Ells. 
the design philosophy was mainly, what can we do on a small budget? That meant using pipes for table bases and barn metal for the counters. Anything that was cheap to source and easy to install. Almost no funds went into branding and figuring out a menu. Steve Ells was clear that he wanted something quick and easy. In his words, Chipotle is very simple food. His menu had only a few items, so it required less ingredients, less cooks and no waiters. He was also set on using the name from a Mexican dried and smoked jalapeno pepper called Chipotle. He named the restaurant so because of the use of Chipotle peppers in everything, from the marinade to the beans and the barbacoa. Eld was first introduced to the ingredient while working at Stars, and its depth of flavor and smokiness seemed to inspire him. In 1993, on July the 13th, Chipotle opened its doors. Els and his father calculated that he would have to sell just 107 burritos a day to be profitable. This was easier said than done. As a concept, it didn't make sense to the general public in Colorado. The first issue was that people couldn't quite pronounce the name. The second was that it was an open kitchen, where you essentially built your own burrito, so you were completely involved in the process. It confused people, which sounds odd now, but back in the day, it was a totally new concept for a restaurant. But this was only a hiccup. When a local food critic left the restaurant a glowing review shortly after the opening, Chipotle sales skyrocketed to a thousand sales a day, over 10 times what Els had anticipated. The business was such a financial success that Els would end up paying his father back the loan within the first year. Knowing that his son was not particularly gifted in balancing the finances, Steve's father was amazed by this and was convinced his son was making a mistake. But after going over the books himself, he had to admit they were, in fact, sitting on gold. Additional investment from his father, combined with reinvested profits, helped grow the company further. After having opened three locations in his hometown, Chipotle opened its first location outside Colorado in Kansas City, Missouri, in May 1998. Chipotle's success did not go unnoticed. After a year of back and forth, McDonald's decided to acquire a small stake in the company in 1998. Although they preferred to buy the company outright, Eld was not interested in relinquishing control, as by now he knew exactly how valuable Chipotle's economic model was. Being backed by a giant like McDonald's opened a lot of doors. They went from having 16 locations in 1998 to over 500 by the time 2005 rolled around. By then, Eld was in the perfect position to step back from Chipotle and make his dream of a fine dining restaurant come true. But he had a new love now. In 2006, McDonald's completely divested from Chipotle turning their original $360 million investment into an impressive return of $1.5 billion. But it wasn't exactly a tearful goodbye. McDonald's had several suggestions for Els, like adding a drive through and a breakfast menu, all of which Els refused. Moreover, McDonald's was in the business of franchising their stores, and soon enough, people wanted to franchise Chipotle, which Els was also against. After all, it was his economic model, and he was certain he wanted to own it. Chipotle officially became a publicly traded company in late January 2006. The company's share price doubled on its very first day of trade, making it the best American-based IPO in six years. For the next eight years, Els would continue to grow the restaurant into the fine establishment it is today. But after many years of great success, the company entered a period of great turbulence in 2015. In July that year, an E. coli outbreak was traced back to a Chipotle branch in Seattle. It snowballed from there. The norovirus and salmonella outbreaks to various investigations conducted by the CDC. In the end, 55 people would be infected by E. coli during not one, but two outbreaks at the company. Steve Ells had never dealt with anything of this magnitude. But all said and done, Chipotle dealt with it well by hiring consultants to improve their food safety standards and recruiting board members that could help him ingrain food safety into the very fiber of the company. Speaking to NPR on Guy Raz's How I Built This podcast in 2017, Ells commented about that period. We are prepared now for a lot of success ahead of us. As of late November 2021, the company has a market capitalization of over $51 billion, 
a very impressive feat for Burrito Shack that started in a small location in Denver across from a college. Steve Ells broke his final ties to the company when he left Chipotle in March of 2020. With a rumored net worth of $300 million, it seems that he has more than enough to start that fine dining restaurant he was dreaming of so many years ago. Not all founders are as fortunate as Steve Ells to stumble upon such a unique business idea. But keeping a tight grip on your expenditures to manage the profitability of your company and have sufficient funds to finance growth initiatives is something that any business owner can realize. And that is where our sponsor, Gig Rally, a product brought to us by, yes, another bootstrapped company, might be able to help you. Does your business rely on freelancers or contractors? Are you often surprised by the amount they end up billing you? Then you need Gig Rally to help you keep track of your financial obligation when you hire these professionals. Reduce your financial stress and run a much more profitable business by using Gig Rally. Get your free trial by visiting gigrally.com. We hope this video inspired you. If it did, be sure to like this video and subscribe for more videos just like this. If you want to be notified about new videos, click that bell icon and set the notifications to all. And make sure to also visit our blog over at SavvyMates.com to watch many more exciting episodes of the Bootstrapped Founders Spotlight and register for free to be the first to watch new episodes weeks before we release them here on YouTube. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next one.